So after all, what is mass transfer? I'm pretty sure you have been hearing this concept, maybe even before you started your transfer operations, such as heat transfer, momentum transfer, or maybe you have no idea at all. It sounds like some type of movement or transfer or change of mass. Now, of course, we need to get more technical. And this is what this lecture is for. We need to define or fully define what is mass transfer. Okay, so first, try to imagine a system containing at least two or more components whose concentration vary from point to point. So before we even start, now we are already adding space or dimensions. Let's say it's important now the position of the mass or component or concentration or molecule, okay? And once again, we need at least two components because one component per se will not make that much sense, okay? You need to have at least two components. And um, let's say that you throw some dye and you have all the droplets. You know that as time passes by, you will get this glass in equal concentration. So if you were to measure this point, or measure this point, or maybe measure this point, you will always see this true, that the concentration is the same. Whereas here it is not. If you were to rapidly, after the drop is uh, sent to the glass, you were to check the concentration here and the concentration here, they will be different. Now, this is a natural tendency. You don't need to mix it. You know already that even though gravity pushes downwards and maybe you throw the droplet uh, downwards or maybe you throw it to the right you know that eventually it will get uniform the concentration the dyes the molecules will go evenly well this is the so-called mass transfer phenomena and we typically use the name transfer and you gotta ensure that transfer is not movement guys it's more like a uh, intermolecular phenomena that occurs here now, please note that this is while minimizing the concentration differences within the system and, more importantly, towards the equilibrium. Now, hopefully, you get your grasp on, yeah, finally, we are using equilibrium in something that this is not related or directly related to equilibrium. As you can see here, guys, well, you will see that there is a gradient. Here's high concentration, low concentration. What we will see in nature is that eventually all the molecules will uh, dissipate or will move towards the least uh, concentrated material and they will form an equilibrium, meaning that if I were to calculate the difference on concentration in this point and the difference in concentration in this point, both should be equal to zero. Okay, so that's why we say that mass transfer will occur always until equilibrium is formed. The transport of one component from each region, once again, we are using space, we're using components, which stands for mass, of course, and of higher concentrations, we, the concept of concentration is very important, to that of a lower concentration is called mass transfer. So if you, wanted to, if you want to learn one definition, this will be it, in my opinion, is not good enough, but that is, let's say, the formal definition of a book. And in this example, the example in which we drop a dye, drop here, red dye, and this is water, high concentration to low concentration. So this is fun. It's pretty similar to heat transfer. You always see something or heat moving from high temperature to low temperature. And hopefully it makes a little bit sense if you remember from your heat transfer classes or if you don't remember but you should know at least from thermodynamics that in this state we have a lot of molecules moving very strongly at high kinetic energies and we have these molecules moving slower so not that drastic changes so what happens here essentially is that molecules will start colliding or crashing between each other and uh, transporting or let's say not transporting but sending or transferring will be the proper name, the energy, kinetic energy, into this part. 
And recall that kinetic energy or the average kinetic energy measurement is called temperature. Well, the same is true here. You will see that never ever you will see something diluted here that will go to a certain random point just because. If you see that, it's because of gravity then. There is a force, external force in the system that maybe you, you have seen, yeah, I've seen some sugar that deposits here or some crystals deposit here. They always tend to go here. Well, that will be not an example of mass transfer. That is another thing that, well, I don't want to get the technical for now, but it's not the case we're talking about. If you were to talk about pure concentrations, they always go from high concentration to low concentration and never in reverse. Once again, this is kind of on the change on entropy of the system and the universe. Mass transfer plays an important role in many industrial processes. A group of operations for separating the components of mixture is based on the transfer of material or mass transfer from one homogeneous phase to another. So this is also interesting, homogeneous phases. Not always the case must be homogeneous cases, but in, re in the industry is what we mostly use. These methods covered by the term mass transfer operations. So I'm pretty sure that you have your class or lecture or subject, which is mass transfer operation, very similar to heat transfer operations, momentum operations, and so on. What do we mean with mass transfer operations? Well, typically we'll say distillation, which is about vapor liquid distillation. Uh, well, yeah, distillation. We want to separate, purify materials, gas absorption from gas liquid, humidification, which changes the percentage or amount of humidity in a material, liquid extraction, which typically depends on two liquids and a component changing from phases, these two phases, adsorption, which is more technically speaking to a solid membrane separation. I don't want to get that technical, but as well, you will see membranes later on and so on. The important part right here is that the driving force for transfer in these operations are typically the concentration gradients. Similar to temperature gradient or velocity changes uh, or momentum gradient, provides a driving force for heat transfer and momentum transfer. So essentially, I want later on to show you the analogies. Newton's law, which includes viscosity, the dimension, and velocity. Then we will see Fourier's law, which stands for the same temperature change along a distance. Well, we will see later on Fick's law, which stands a little bit more diffusivity, the change in concentrations and the distance. So as you can see here, we have our constant, which typically can be also assumed to be a resistance. We have our variable of interest, which depending on the type of transport will be velocity or rate of change of movement, temperature and concentration, and of course, spatial, uh, spatial or space dimension. All this relates rate of mass, well here will be momentum transfer, rate of heat transfer, oops, heat transfer, and rate of mass transfer. I don't want you to confuse momentum, heat, and mass transfer. Okay. Do not confuse, once again, mass transfer with movement of mass. So if you have a pipe and you move 10 kilos from point A to point B, if you are talking about water and there is no change in gradient or concentration, this is movement of mass and it is not a mass transfer process. Okay, very important to keep in mind. And in this specific case, I show this random image so you can try to understand, well, in this specific case, of course, it's mostly velocity, but try to imagine if uh, the several colors were temperature, velocities, and concentrations. Okay, let's do so. If it was temperature, then here, I don't know, maybe it's because there's a open flame. 
hitting this part right here and this will be cold. I don't know, maybe it's a tank which is outside. This is coming from our reactor and we have the heating flame here will be an example of temperature gradient. If the color was velocity, let it be that this red point maybe is, I don't know, there's some wall right here which they crash right here. This is slow, this is medium speed, this is very slow and you will see of course a point right here which is slow and eventually they recover and as you can see here there's almost two layers the slower layer and the more quick layer and if it was concentration let's say that we got concentration of a here which will be mm, let's say medium concentration of a here which is high maybe you are producing a material and this is the recycle which is higher in concentration this comes outside of the reactor and maybe there's a point, I don't know, something that is reacting, a catalyst of something that will decrease the concentration of A at this point. Eventually they mix and that's why maybe they are, I don't know, this could be letter B or component B and A. So that's essentially what I wanted to show you on mass transfer. We're going to see a little bit more on this.